So sometimes it's the people that you care about the most and you want to love you the most that aren't able to recognize your worth. This is because they can't recognize your high value qualities because they can't even see them within themselves. People can only meet you as deeply as they have met themselves. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to Hot and Unbothered, the ultimate podcast for unlocking the hottest, highest, healthiest, and happiest version of yourself. If you are new here, I'm your host, Brianna Gomez, and today we are talking about probably one of my favorite ever concepts when it comes to mindset and self-worth. If you are going to listen to just one of my podcast episodes, this is the one to tap into. There's something about this concept. I will get into it and explain it to you guys, but it truly did the extra mile when it comes to rewiring my mindset and my brain, really flipping the switch and turning on my higher standards and knowing kind of what my morals are, where I'm going to draw the line. This is that concept. If you guys tuned into last week's episode, I started saying that I was going to implement whether it's a mantra or a habit, a challenge for you guys at the end of each episode that kind of correlates with the theme. Let me know how you guys did with last week's challenge and mantra, which was write yourself a love letter, whether it's like in your journal or just an affirmation and also to develop the mantra and mindset that there is no lack in life when you are operating from love and I still stand by that. I hope you guys all had a good Valentine's Day whether you were focusing on loving other people or yourself. I hope you enjoyed it and just really took the extra step to spread the love and radiate that positive energy. On top of sharing the weekly mantra slash affirmation with you guys as well as the challenge, I'm also going to be just reading quick one of your guys's ratings slash responses or comments on the podcast so whether you leave it on spotify apple podcasts or youtube even if you dm me a message um, letting me know your feedback of the podcast i will share it or if you have something that you guys want to share with everybody else i'll be picking someone every week to kind of share over the podcast so this week we have the lovely jade she said girl meeting you i picked up on your energy immediately people constantly think you can't be a confident woman and a girl's girl at the same time love love loved this podcast first of all that is the sweetest thing anyone's ever said to me so thank you i love you and i'm so glad that you guys are loving the podcast and i think that is so true people really do kind of hate sometimes on a confident woman and they instantly assume that they're not a girl's girl just because they are being a girl's girl to themselves so you can love yourself and love other girls i think that's such a common misconception and i loved that review so yeah make sure you guys are leaving a review or comment rating whatever it may be just so I can make sure I can respond to you guys and see how you're loving the pod let's dive into today's episode today I am talking about my favorite theory slash concept metaphor whatever you want to call it it is called the pink diamond theory I did a video about this on my tiktok it's actually my most recent video that surpassed a million views because you guys loved it so much and you loved my um, theory behind it I guess so let's dive into the pink diamond theory I want you guys to stay with me for the metaphor part because the meaning is so deep again if you're going to listen to any one of my episodes this is the one to listen to I beg you guys this will change your entire perspective I'm sorry if I butcher the delivery of this story, I don't even know where it came from. It sounds like a little folk tale. I have no clue where it came from. I heard it. I gave my interpretation on my TikTok and it's been almost a year since I did that. But here is the story. One day, a man found the most beautiful, rare pink diamond and he gave it to his daughter and said, go take this around the village and see how much you can get for it. See how much people will buy it from you for. Following her father's instructions, the girl first goes to her town's bakery. She walks in, holds out the diamond for the baker to see. The baker asks how much for the diamond and the girl holds up two fingers. The baker goes, Oh, only $2 for such a beautiful diamond? I'll take it. Knowing that the diamond is definitely worth more, but thinking since it's a young girl, he could get away with just paying those $2. But the girl knows the diamond's worth and she decides to pass on the deal and keep looking because her father would have wanted her to sell the diamond for much more than $2. Hoping for some better luck, the girl goes to the antique store next. She walks in, holds out the diamond when the man working asks how much for the diamond. She holds up her two fingers again 
again and he says two hundred dollars mm, i don't think so the antiquer does not see the actual worth of the diamond and he's not willing to spend even two hundred dollars on it so the girl says fine and takes her diamond away hoping for better luck elsewhere finally the girl takes her pink diamond to the jeweler when asked the price she holds up her two fingers once again and the jeweler says two million dollars that's a fair price for such a beautiful gem I'll take it. So the girl sells her diamond for the two million dollars. The jeweler is able to see that this is such a rare beautiful stone that will probably only come around once in his lifetime and he is willing to pay however much it takes to obtain and care for this stone and get it in his possession. So good thing the girl didn't sell her beautiful pink diamond to the people who were hardly willing to pay anything for it and waited for the person who finally saw its worth and was willing to pay whatever it took to obtain such a beautiful rare gem do you guys get what i'm getting at everyone values different things and not every single person you come across in life is going to see your worth and i know that is so tricky to wrap your head around because don't you want to be like here look at my shiny pink diamond look at how beautiful and perfect and sparkly and rare it is and they still only want to pay two dollars for it but if it's not in their budget they're going to try to rip you off for it they're going to try to give you way less and make it feel like that's what you deserve if you haven't caught on by now you are the pink diamond and all of the people you come across in life not every single person is going to see your worth and i feel like especially when it comes to the dating world but it could be even with friends family members co-workers as well we try so hard sometimes to stand in front of people waving our arms jumping up and down and screaming hey i'm worth it see me love me choose me like ugh. No, not everyone in life is going to see your worth and when they don't accept that worth, when they don't see you, don't try to paint a different picture. You can't force people to see you no matter how much you want to. You have to accept their answer because they're showing you exactly how they feel about you. They're treating you exactly how they feel about you. Accept the answer. Don't try to paint a different picture and move on to the next. You can't keep holding on and grasping on, waiting for the day that they eventually see you and they'll eventually choose you. You cannot force someone to choose you or see you. Everyone values different things. Everyone finds different people beautiful, different personalities beautiful you won't be the perfect match for everyone you come across you just can't it's it's life but if someone doesn't recognize you as valuable you have to take that rejection as redirection and hold on to the belief that there is something else coming for you if someone doesn't see your worth the next person will and you have to truly believe that because your life does not revolve around getting other people to like you or see your worth it's about seeing it in yourself and being truly okay with the fact that not everyone will see your worth. Again, you cannot force someone to see your worth. If some baker thinks you are worth $2 or if someone won't even pay the $200 for you, yes, this is a metaphor, but even so, you guys, you have to remember that there is someone out there who is willing to give you everything and just be patient and wait for them instead of saying yes to the wrong person, instead of literally lowballing yourself. Because when you have a strong self-concept, you're sure of yourself, you believe you have a high self-worth, you have high expectations and you set your standards high for yourself because i feel like today in this day and age the bar sometimes is literally on the ground like with social media the amount of girls who are getting so impressed because a guy texted her good morning yes that's amazing but like bare minimum babes bare freaking minimum so it's up to you to decide what level playing field are you going to be on what tier are you because if you put yourself in the tier where like doing good morning texts and saying hi is the best it will possibly get that's fine with me if that's where your bar is set that's great or you could set the standard for you want dates, you want princess treatment, you want flowers, you want a provider. You set the bar for yourself and you have to decide whether you're going to be okay with a baker or a jeweler. Do you get what I mean? Quick disclaimer, although I thought it was a given, this has nothing to do with anything against bakers in general in real life. This is just a metaphor for the story. I posted this on my TikTok and everyone was like, why the baker slander? She hates bakers. I'm a baker. I'm like, guys, nothing wrong with bakers in real life. This is just for the story, the baker specifically, who did not want to pay more than two dollars for the diamond so if you're a real baker no offense to you but as for our story do you guys want a baker who wants to pay the 
bare freaking minimum and rip you off on your worth? Or do you want to wait for the jeweler who is willing to give you the world, who is willing to sacrifice anything just to be with you? Like I said, you decide the type of person you want to attract. If you want a high value person who sees you as high value as well, or a low value person, I know a lot of people don't like that term, like high value woman, low value man. But generally speaking, do you want someone who doesn't see you as worthy of nice things and worth the effort and worth trying for and they just want the easy way out of everything? Or do you want someone who's going to put in all the effort they have, who's going to give it their all, who wants to provide for you, do things for you, who knows that you really are worth the entire world and that's what you deserve? One of those is the right answer. You guys can pick to each their own, but I'm going with the jeweler. I don't know about y'all. I feel like when we're in situations where our worth is not being recognized or we're not being valued or pursued enough, we tell ourselves these little lies that like, oh, it's okay. Like he just is balling on a budget right now. You know, one day he'll get me flowers or people are like, I don't even like flowers anyway. I didn't even want them. It's fine. Like, I'm just not like that. Girl, stop lying, first of all. You want flowers. You want notes. At least that's what you deserve. You deserve all the nice things, and there is someone out there who will give that all to you and more. So stop lying to yourself, first of all. I feel like we tell ourselves these self-limiting beliefs when really your worth is truly limitless. You decide what your worth is. It's infinite. So are you going to hang back with the bakers who probably aren't going anywhere in life because they don't like working or trying hard? for anything. Again, I'm not talking about real actual bakers. I'm talking about the story. Or are you going to wait for a jeweler who understands your worth and will see you and love you and want to give you everything? Someone who sees you and says, this girl is so rare and unique and special. She's only going to come around once in a lifetime, recognizes you as high value, as special, as beautiful, as worthy of love, and truly wants to give that to you and is willing to do whatever it takes. You decide your standards. It's not the baker's fault, if you're willing to settle for the baker, you know, because you made that decision. So I want you to do yourself a favor and put yourself on the right tier. Decide that your bare minimum is higher than it's been. You can raise your standards. That's totally fine because you got to weed out, you got to weed out the bakers. I'm not going to lie. I feel like it's so realistic to how real life is, the way that the girl had to go to person to person until someone finally understood their worth. Because if she just stopped at the baker, if she stayed with the baker, she would have thought that she was worth $2 the whole time. And I feel like sometimes when you are with someone, whether it's a relationship, anything like that, when you're with a person who doesn't want you to know your true worth, they will literally try to keep it a secret from you. I know I talked about this before, but like, for example, my ex hated it when I hopped on social media because I was getting all these like you're so beautiful and you can do this and this and that you're so inspiring blah 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 and I was like wait people actually like me and I'm worth something and I'm good for something and he hated it like they want to hide it from you I feel like they want you to think that you are worth so much less than you actually are because they know the second you gain the confidence to know that you deserve better and raise your standards you're gone and you're never looking back and they know that that's the reality so they try to keep you hidden like a precious diamond. They'll string you along just enough, like just those two dollars to keep you around, but they will never go the full extra mile in showering you with love and whatever you deserve. And again, this might sound materialistic because I know the story has to do with money, the two million dollars. I'm not talking about you have to wait for a guy that has money. Those grand gestures do not have to cost money. There's a lot of more thoughtful things that they could do for free. So this isn't about financial status, although if you want to wait for a rich guy get your bag do you but i'm saying it is not about money it's just about people who see your worth versus those who don't and you can truly tell when someone knows your worth you don't have to question it if you are questioning whether or not someone values you that's your answer and you better run. This analogy is going to sound so stupid, but think of yourself as a designer brand, a designer bag. Say you're a Chanel bag, okay? Only the people who can either A, afford the Chanel bag will get you, which obviously if they can afford it to like do those nice things to you, to obtain you and impress you, sure. But even if they can't, 
They will work day and night until they can afford that Chanel bag. They will work overtime. They will put in the hours, whatever it takes. I don't know. That was just a stupid example that came in my head. Again, this has nothing to do with financial stability, although that is something you deserve. I just wanted to clarify that this isn't about having money, but it's about recognizing something that, yes, you may have to work for it. It may take effort and hard work, but willing to put that hard work in anyway. And there are people out there who are willing to go to the ends of the earth for you. Like I promise, I cannot emphasize this enough. So yeah, don't settle for a baker. So you might be asking yourself like, why does someone not see my worth? You know, sometimes it's the people that you care about the most and you want to love you the most that aren't able to recognize your worth. This is because they can't recognize your high value qualities because they can't even see them within themselves. People can only meet you as deeply as they have met themselves. Let me say it again. People can only meet you as deeply as they have met themselves. And they cannot recognize your high value qualities because they can't even recognize them within themselves. We as humans are reflections of each other. You know, the things that you see in other people, those are things that you have in yourself or value in yourself. So if they don't see you, they simply aren't on your level because maybe one of your high value qualities is that you have a really good heart, a good, genuine, overflowing heart. If they don't recognize that as important, which I think that is one of the like foundational qualities to have, especially as a woman, I think that it's so important. But if the guy who you're talking to, whatever, if he doesn't see that as an important quality, if he doesn't cherish and love that quality about you, it's because he can't even recognize love in a good, true heart. He can't even fathom it because it's nothing that he has even ever known within himself. Does that make sense? Like if it's something that he doesn't even have, he doesn't even know about it. That whole entire concept is foreign to him, the concept of true love. He hasn't even learned that yet so he doesn't value it because he doesn't have it so if someone does not see you they simply aren't on your level that might not even be their fault but they just might not even be capable of knowing or recognizing these high value beautiful things and so if someone ever makes you feel less than you really are you are in the wrong place. If someone makes you feel like they think you're asking for too much, that you as a person are too much, that's a fear that I always held on to. I feel like in previous relationships, I always was feeling like I was too much for the person. That was my biggest fear. But if someone ever makes you feel like that, you're in the wrong place. You'll never feel the need to settle for less when you're getting what you deserve. You have to hold on to that feeling of what you know you are meant for and decide that you're not going to settle for less. Like I was saying before, sometimes people will actually see the value of the jewel, but they're going to pretend that it's worth only $2 or $200 because they know they can't afford it, because they're not willing to put in the work to afford you and work for you and give you what you deserve. So instead, they might try to manipulate you and make you feel like you're less than you really are. And this whole analogy is 100% how people get into relationships where they're unhappy. They know that they probably deserve more, they want more, but they come across a mediocre guy, which in my last episode, like I said, settling for mediocrity is scarier than being alone so much scarier, especially because you get stuck, because they will over time make you feel like you do deserve less than the best. Again, they'll breadcrumb you, string you along just enough to get you to stay, but never fully giving you what you want or desire or deserve. But since you are so used to less than the bare minimum, that's where you set the bar at. And sometimes you'll even know that you are worth way more, but you'll settle for less in the fear that something better will never come come for you. So instead of being alone, you decide like, you know, this this is enough and you'll lie to yourself. You tell yourself these lies trying to make yourself okay with it and that's how people get stuck. So if you don't work on your self-concept, decide your self-worth and decide where you're going to draw the line, set your boundaries, what your bare minimum is, it's so easy for people to come along, swoop you up and manipulate you into thinking that you actually deserve less than you really do. People will do anything to take the easy way out. If there is one thing I have learned that toxic people hate to see, it's seeing a good woman learn to recognize her worth and become confident to stand alone and know what she deserves. They hate to see it. Getting the love and attention that she deserves and learning to be confident enough to not settle for less. 
They hate it. They just hate seeing a good woman happy. And I can't lie. I'm sorry. I don't know why. It's just jealousy. High value people recognize high value people. So a high value man or woman would never get mad at a high value woman receiving the proper attention and work and effort that she deserves. And a high value partner would never make you feel less than what you actually are. And again, I know I've been using partners as a lot of the examples for this, like boys, but it doesn't have to be a boy. You know, sometimes it's in the workplace, whether it's a boss that doesn't recognize the value and how hard you're working. If they can't see how hard you're working and that you're truly an asset to the company, you might have to take your worth somewhere else because they just might not see it and that's okay. If you've tried and tried and you're bending over backwards to try to get people to finally see you, it's not going to help. People get so stuck in their own ways and again, they might not recognize something special. They might not recognize those good qualities because they don't even have them within themselves. And again, people can only meet you as deeply as they have met themselves. So I want you all to do yourself a favor, practice being okay okay with the fact that not everyone will see your worth. I feel like I've gotten so worked up over the fact that people, you know, dislike me, don't recognize my value. And if anything, overthinking that, overanalyzing that, and clinging on to that negativity will only lower your value, if anything. The best thing that you can do for yourself is to accept it and say, hey, not everyone will see my worth. That's okay. That's a baker. And decide that you are going to move on because rejection is redirection and really welcome the fact, embrace the fact that something better is coming for you. Because think about it, if that girl stopped for the baker and she took the $2 instantly for her beautiful pink rare diamond, she would have never got into the jeweler who was willing to give up anything and everything for that diamond. And your sense of self-worth does not have to be validated by how much another person is willing to do for you. It's about how much you see within yourself because when you realize you're a high value woman how much you deserve that you deserve the best and you are worthy and capable of getting the best you know who you are and you will never ever accept less than that so that's my goal for you guys just to accept someone not seeing your worth instead of bending over backwards trying to convince them that they are worthy there's been times in my life i would have cut off and sold my left arm to get someone to see me the way that i wanted them to see me but you can't that's the part of the unbothered part of hot and unbothered learning to detach from the outcome because you can't control it and the more you hang on to it the worse it gets for you honestly imagine the other person has a box and you are trying so hard to force yourself to fit into their box because you just want them to hold you. You want to be theirs in their box. But if they are not a high value person and they can't recognize high value qualities, they physically do not have the emotional or physical mental capacity to hold you and accept all that you are. If your soul is being held in a box that is this big because it's so vibrant and it's so full of energy and life and it's so complex and dense, it's it's huge. But if they are a high value person, their box is like this tiny and they're shallow. There's not much substance to them. It's all surface level. If your substance in your being and all that you are is taking up this grand big amount of space, you can't fit it into their tiny little box. They don't have the capacity, the mental or emotional, physical capacity to hold all that you are. We have to stop forcing ourselves into places that we don't fit. There's someone out there who is able to hold all that you are and you just have to wait for that because the more you try to confine yourself into these tight spaces, you will literally feel quite literally that it doesn't fit. You ever hear people say it's not the right fit for you? That's not just like a saying. It literally, you outgrow it. You don't fit in that tiny space. You have to go somewhere where they can accept bigger and better things and they recognize your worth and make room for you. And we truly do outgrow people. Sometimes someone else's potential and their views in their mind, it is limited. And I don't mean this in a mean way, but sometimes we do outgrow people. Their goals for life, their aspirations, their mindset, mentality, theirs does not align with ours. Sometimes theirs reaches their limit. And if you can go way past that, you have to recognize that that's not a loss but you're just outgrowing them and you have to move on 
go take your talent and your beauty and your uniqueness somewhere where it will be appreciated and nourished and taken care of. I almost made the logo or title of this podcast something to do with pink diamonds. I actually wear a pink diamond ring on my finger every day just to remind me of this analogy that I'm a pink diamond. You guys are all pink diamonds. Don't settle for the two dollars from the baker because something better is always coming for you guys. And I will absolutely be using this as a nighttime story for my kids. The pink diamond theory. I could seriously turn it into a children's book. The first time I heard it, I was like, I'm telling this to my kids because I feel like this is the simplest way you could put it when it comes to self-worth and not settling for less and accepting the fact that not everyone will see your worth and still believing that something better is out there for you guys. A really simple affirmation that you guys can remind yourself throughout the week is I am worthy of the best kind of love. Just to remember not to settle for less and that you truly are deserving of someone who really does see your worth. With all of that being said, I believe that wraps up our episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it was kind of a random topic to do for one of my very first episodes, but this is a story that I seriously stand by and it's something that helped me so much when it comes to my self-love and worth journey. So I was just hoping that you guys would benefit from the story as well. I think it's a really good way to put into simple terms that you guys are pink diamonds and you are rare and beautiful and you should never settle for someone who does not see your worth. I love you guys so, so much. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Feel free to keep up with Hot and Unbothered on Instagram at Hot Unbothered. I also started a Hot and Unbothered TikTok page at Hot Unbothered. All my socials are Brianna Gomez with two Bs. I stream the episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and you can watch it also on my YouTube channel. And I will see you guys next Friday. Love you so much. Bye.